Hello everyone and welcome to my new YouTube video. We've come down a 12-13 mile road, passing place, a single carriage road, and we've arrived at Elgo, this most beautiful place at the southwest side of Skye, which in itself is amazing too. So we have this amazing scene in front of us. The weather's totally different, it's cloudy, so it's going to make quite a moody picture, but um, very nice as you can see another wonderful location in Scotland. We've set up quite close to the sea and the tide is coming in so I'm a little bit concerned that we're going to have a bit of time left over maybe a half an hour I don't know so we may be pushed off this quite soon so I'm going to have to work really really fast to get this one done. So I've done the sketch and this is the sketch of it if you can see that so loads of the mountains the cooling range in the distance and these beautiful rocks you may have seen if you if you do look at videos or or photos of sky this is one of the most famous spots on sky lovely place okay this is going to be a tricky picture the colors are quite muted so they're quite gray and i'm going to try a different thing this time a much broader style every time i paint i seem to paint in a different way so i, I enjoy that part of painting and I think each picture demands its own technique and it's important not to be just rooted in one technique and not change. So this is going to be a change technique for me, a much broader scene, much less detail in it. So we'll, we're going to really put the first layer on fast. As you can see it's a, it's a blue, very, very overcast day so the colours are going to be quite limited in this one. So they're going to have a bluey, browny feel to it. And I'm going, I'm going to try and paint it as, as simply as I can. Mainly because the time is so short. That, that tide is coming up fast. And within an hour or so, we're going to be underwater. Right, put the, I'm going to put the mountains on now, just broadly. Try and, try and, I'm going to try and get the values more accurate this time because I, I, I don't really have time to go over them again. A little bit of green, cobalt blue. Really trying to uh, work the paint very fast indeed. Especially for such a big picture. Crowns a little bit lighter. Again, just washing it over quickly, not really worry too much about resolving the picture. I like to work in a few layers of paint, so um, I'll adjust the, uh, the value of the picture in the second layer. Yeah, that's nice. Looks very, very wet, and the beautiful nature of watercolors coming through where one color is bleeding into the next color. I like that sort of thing. Okay, going into the sea now. It's quite a quite a dark, dark colour, so a bit of viridian in it. But it's a it's a dirty sort of colour sea today. It's not it's not like the beautiful white sands of Sutherland. It's a very different feeling today. Um, What's going to be interesting with these series of paint, paintings and if you follow on is that I'll be going throughout the season. So I'll be coming to places in Scotland where the weather is going to be horrible. <laughs> Very shortly now we're entering, well we've really entered autumn now and there's a, there's a big difference in the, the, the temperature and the, in the air and the quality of light. But the west coast is a very, very changeable place. The, the weather's changing all the time. When you gain experience with watercolour, uh, you'll notice the subtlety of colour coming in. And at the moment, I'm, I'm seeing a little bit of red in the water. Now, you wouldn't normally see that or notice that, but when you start painting in watercolour, you start to see things and to see what colours they really are. And the redness is coming out of it. So I'm adding a, a little bit of alizarin crimson to the water the, the closer it comes to the shore. I, I see that, that little redness coming out now, which, I, which is really nice. Again, variety in a picture is what I'm looking for. 
changes of color, changes of value, seeing it always in a different light. Right now, the next change, which is going to be the rocks down at the front here. Now, they're an interesting color. They've, they've got a blueness and a sort of raw umber color to them. And they're just covered in crustaceans. That's, that's what the color is. It's not the rock color that you're seeing. It's the crustaceans color. So we're going to have a little bit of a raw umber, which is pretty close to the color that they are. They're a yellowy sort of color. And we're going to pop some of them on here. Again, if you notice with my style, I have quite a broad style. I, I'm very re reluctant to go into detail very quickly at all. I, 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 I want to keep it as, as if it's e something easy to change later on. If I'm too certain too soon, then I, I feel that uh, it's difficult to change it later on. So keep, keep, it, keep it broad for as long as you possibly can. And there we go, that's the first layer put in. And you can see it's very roughly put in. I'm not trying to get anything uh, too, too resolved in it yet. And I'm gonna let that dry now. But as I'm standing here, I can feel drizzle coming in. So I was hoping to really let that dry for a few moments before I go into it with the second layer. But the weather in Scotland is not gonna be, not gonna oblige me today. So we'll just have to wait as long as we can. But as I say, it's starting to rain now. Right, it's, it's really started to rain now, so we're going to have to give it a little end to this. So I'm going to stop and hopefully it's going to stop. So we're going to pack up quickly and hopefully the weather's going to get back to, to normal. Well, sort of normal. <laughs> it's really coming in from the side now. That's from the west. We've got a westerly breeze coming in. You can see it, it's just a cloud bank. And I don't know whether that's going to chop change at all. So the lens is going to get very, very wet in a minute. Now what's happened, I've, I've placed my watercolour upside down on the board here in the hope of it changing but I've got a bad feeling about this. The weather's slightly changed, it's got a little bit dry, a little bit of rain in the sky but not too bad so I might give it a go and carry on. But you can see if you come down here you can see how the raindrops have affected the paint and it's, it has like a mottled effect to it all which I don't really like but there we go. So if you ever paint in the rain, that's what's going to happen to it. I'm going to carry on with the picture. So I'm going to start with the mountains in the background. So the first one has a little bit of a greeny tint, which I'm going to, going to, going to give it. And then as you get further back, they get slightly bluer and lighter in color. So I'm trying to work out what colors they are. So I think it's an ultramarine blue or a cobalt blue and a little bit of alizarin crimson. So that's these, these peaks in the distance here. Try and change the color again. The clouds come in on the peaks now and sort of hiding them a bit, but I'm going to try and depict it as it was. So with, with the little peaks shining through in the distance and trying to, trying to make them a little bit more angular. They're quite angular here as opposed to Sutherland where the Ice Age has really, really rounded them off. But they've just seen that little bit more angular here, which is, which is a nice change too. So that's the far distant ones done. And then there's a one that's coming in towards the left, slightly behind, which is slightly darker than the one that's in front. So I'll try and make that stand out a bit. difficult letting the paint dry in these situations. When it's wet the paint doesn't dry on the paper so it, it adds another le level of complexity to the picture. Uh, you, 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 can't, you can't lay a dry layer over the top of it unfortunately. Laying on the little washes of colour on the mountains, there's a lot of subtlety in the picture. The, the, each, each mountain is uh, one value or one shade less than the next, val next mountain as you go further back. So I want to try and depict that. And then the, there's a, the, they're on much lighter on the right, so it's almost like there's some sun over there. Right, we've given the, the, the mountains another layer of paint. Uh, 
trying to get the values a bit better. Now we're going to work down into the sea to try and get a little bit of detail in the sea coming up. It's quite choppy, lots of uh, little waves forming which have dark elements to it, so I'm not too sure how we're going to depict that. The waves at the front are being reflected in the stone, so the, the colour of the water is changing to a much greener colour and the reflections along here, which is lovely. I love, I love noticing those little changes in colour. When, when you paint, you, you start to observe the world in a totally different way. Normally, if you don't paint, you just walk around saying, oh, that's nice, that's nice. But when you actually stop and look and see what's going on, then you start to notice things. And that's what being an artist is all about, just noticing things that you haven't noticed before. We're going to start painting the rocks now. And if you look very carefully, the, the, the darker side of the rocks, this side of the rocks, are a bluer colour. And then you have the lighter edge around it, which is the light browny, yellow, raw umber colour. So what I'm going to do, on the painting here, the edge of the rock I'm going to leave as this colour here. So this, these colours here will be the edge, edge of the rock. So what I'm going to do is paint over those, leaving the bits that are light to indicate the darker sections. So the colours here, you can see the colours I've got here. So you've got burnt umber, ultramarine blue, uh, calm, uh, alizarin crimson and a little raw umber there. And from those we're going to try and get a variety of colours within the shade whilst leaving the high spots around. So look. So here we go, trying to, trying to paint the shadows in of this rock, which is really interesting. Trying to change the colour as much as I can as well. So trying to keep the Elizabethan crimson in there, the slightly redder, warmer tones. And then it becomes slightly bluer in places. So you see the variety. I don't know whether the camera picks it up, but you see the variety in there. So it's not just one colour, it's a whole range of different colours. That's what I find pretty. So trying to keep the edge of that rock coming in, so the little highlight coming in there. That's nice. The top of the rock coming in. So it's, it's what I don't paint which is important in this part. It's, it's, what you, it's what you leave out which is important. You can figure that one out which is partly what watercolour is. So it's important not to paint things as it is to paint things. So then the, 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 the next colour rock comes in here, so that's the, the edge of it. A few more colours. But burnt umber, burnt siember, and then crimson coming in here. And so leaving the top of it exposed so it gives that sense of the rim of the rock. Right, the tide has come up or come in about 10 metres now so we've got under 10 metres left of it so we'll, we'll see what's going to happen here. I'm trying to work as fast as I can to depict these rocks. I'm carrying on with the rocks so I'm painting the rock behind which is an interesting rock. I've pushed it in a little bit and I like it because it's like a cube, like a dice almost. So it has definite planes to it, which I'm going to try to, try to depict. So it's got the tops. Uh, it, it's, got the, it's got the side plane too. Coming down on the, on the right there. So we're trying to create the three-dimensionality of the rocks, make it look like it's solid. Leaving the top a bit brighter than the rest, than the rest of it. It's a quite interesting shape. And then you have a rock coming in in the front here. And you can see, if you look here, this is where I had depicted rocks in the foreground, but now that's the sea. So you can see how it's changed. I'm working my way along, back along the ridge now. So I've started from the right and moving on. I'm just going to darken certain areas. Now that the, the second coat of uh, watercolour has dried, 
I can go into it again, hopefully get the values just on right. Again, still working across. So that's a bit darker, this mountain here. And then this one goes into the midsection mountain, which is again is darker than this section. So this is the next range to come in. I don't know whether you can see the mountains at the same time. So I'll try and make that a little bit darker. So one, one of the important parts of watercolour is that it is the art of happy accidents. And it, it's very, very, very important, I can't stress how important it is, to recognise when the happy accident happens. If you do something well, the happy accident, and you don't recognise it, then what you'll do, the natural thing to do, is to paint over it. And I've seen it countless of times where an art student has done a good picture, they've, they've made a really lovely mark, they really, I mean, super mark, but because they didn't recognise that it was a great mark, they painted straight over it. And that's a huge problem. So this is where developing your aesthetic judgment is so important. All right, just trying to finish off the, the ridges in the mountains. They're cliffs that stick out and they're gullies in there as well, right by the coast. So I'll try and put, put those in. I don't want to overdo the details. That's, my, that's one of my terrors in, in painting, to overdo the details. So try not to do that. So the top's being covered by the clouds. Right, that looks quite simple. So the, these I'm trying to sort of leave quite plain here. So the clouds come over the top of the picture. And then it becomes it becomes quite a firm line where it, it hits the sea. So let's try and let's try and get that in. They're all the way across is the firm line as they come into the sea. Look at interesting colour. And then right round the side here, this this mountain has another mountain coming round it just to come round the side there. Working down the picture again, so it's time to sort of render the rocks a little bit more. So I've got the highlights, I've got the mid-tones, now I need to put the dark tones into it. Now I remember with watercolour, you paint the lights first, mid-tones and then dark. So it's time for the darks now, which is opposite almost to oil paint, uh, oil painting. So you can see you have a little ridge coming in, lots of little details at the end, underneath it. Lots of little shadows that, are, that seem to appear in, in it. So, and then trying to vary the colour again. I quite like the using the blue for it. But just keep the colours going, just keep the, keep the colours changing. If, if, if you can do that, that really will help you. It certainly helps me anyway. I've, a, I've added a, quite a few dark parts to it and, and now the the, the um, water is reflecting even more in, in it. So some quite green colours, quite strong colours if I can do it. Got quite a small brush going now, but I'll try and use it quickly. You want to try and touch the paper as little as you can. That's part of a nice aspect of watercolour. So the, it, the watercolour is almost breathed on if you can. The waves are really picking up as well. So, and then over to the left, I'm going to put a little bit of Elizair in crimson just to make it pop out as well. So, just trying to get the feel like that's reflecting light into the water. And now, now the the tide's about four meters away. The water, so need to get things going. So, again, more reflections of water and the rock in the water, trying to change the colour again. I don't know whether you can see that, it's changing from green to blue, back to green again. Okay, just trying to get the drama of these rocks in now. I haven't got much time left on this picture, so we'll see how it goes. Just trying to just delineate that scent, that cube, which fascinates me actually. I love that idea of a cubey rock. I really do like it. So trying to make the shadows. Remember the shadows are cooler, so I'm trying to give a real sense of blues in those shadows. Hope you can see that. 
So we have a beautiful boat in the distance there. Now it has moved way over there, but it started, it started here, but it's w way over on the other side of the painting now, or really out of, out of picture. But I'll just sort of paint it as it was. So it was a, it's a three, three mast sailboat, which is lovely. So one, two, three. Quite interesting. Let's add a little bit of right a bit to the top of the sails. Three. It's good. And now for the little base of it. So again, just a little quick depiction of it. And then just trying to get the boat. Again, simple, simple, simple stuff. You don't want to go too overboard with it. Uh, so there's a little speedboat going off into the distance as well. So I'll try and do a little bit of shapes for that. A little white at the top, maybe. There we go. Just the last bit of details, again with the white paint, uh, gouache. So there's some little gullies coming down the hill, mountain in the distance, which I quite like. It gives it a little bit of separation from it, where the water is coming down, maybe a little bit here, just to pick a few of them. I think it nice to add, again, that adds some, a little bit of variety to it. The mountains, a little bit of light on that part coming through, just to make sure you can see they're separate mountains. And a little gully coming in there. Just a little touch here and there, and there's actually a very white building on the far right over here where a little, so then put a little bit of a sense of a building on there. There it is, put that there. That's a nice spot. Also, there, there's little splashes coming up here off the tide and the waves coming across that bit of land. Up here as well. It's quite fun. Great, so the tide is almost up, so we've just got a few more moments to go. I'm going to get the pencil out again and just put a few marks around the rocks just to, as I say, give it a little bit more depth to it. It's not much, it's not going to make too much of a difference to it really, but uh, I, I like to do it just to give it a little bit more shape to the picture. But I, it won't make too much bother with, it, with this particular picture. That's here. What I quite like here, if you look up in the mountains over there, you can see the ridge in the distance and you can actually see it there, but it wasn't like that before. And this effect here is really trying to get the clouds to go over the ridge of it. So you can see how the, the cloud has uh, dribbled or the water's dribbled through and taken down the ultramarine blue. And I think it's quite a pretty effect. Again, try and recognize pretty effects when you see it, but I like that, I like that. It's really nice. So we've got the, the boys in the distance. There's quite a lot of, there's lots and lots of details I haven't included, but that's, that's the pleasure of painting really, not really to, to depict all the details. So time to sign it in the bottom right hand corner. So here we go, James Potter. There we go. So here it is. It's been a real roller coaster of a ride trying to get this picture done. I've gone as fast as I can to get it done. The tide, some of the waves are almost crashing against the easel now, so it's time to pack up now. Really appreciate you watching this program and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it's been fun doing it. My wife behind the camera has really done a good job as well, being soaked from time to time. So much appreciation to her. Uh, she's done a fine job. And, uh, Thanks very much. A little bit of an audience in the background too. So, bye bye. So, hope you enjoy that. And I look forward to seeing you next time. And if you can subscribe and put a thumbs up and possibly make a comment, that would be really good. I love seeing the comments on there and uh, I love trying to encourage other people to paint watercolor and oil plein air. Thanks very much indeed. Bye bye.